Hi guys, it's Shelby, and this is a video about what to bring on your trainer's truck. What the heck? Hey guys, my name is Shelby and this is my co-driver Dakota and today I wanted to talk to you all about what to bring on your trainer's truck. The reason I'm making this is because when I was in this position there was nothing available online to help me and the stuff that was available wasn't really helpful or it was just really boring or really hard to find. And so I've decided that I'm going to make this super easy on you guys and I've created a list. It's super short and sweet and it only includes the necessities of what you need to bring on your trainer's truck. And I've also tried to make everything as like compact as possible. This list will ensure that you don't forget anything. <laughs> oh, get out of the picture. So I've created this short list for you guys. <laughs> she just <laughs> Did you fart too? Is that why you're looking bad? <laughs> oh boy. So down below in the description, I will leave a link to the post on my website where it'll, it'll just be super easy for you guys to get on your phone and follow it and make your shopping a little bit easier. So I've broken down the list into four categories, self-care, clothing, bedding, and miscellaneous, and I'm gonna go ahead and go through them in that order with you now. This is killing me. <laughs> so for the first section, self-care, I start off with shampoo and conditioner, and I've gone to Target and bought all these items, well, most of the items on the list, just to show you that it's easy to get them all in one place like Target or Walmart. I bought most of these things in the men's section just because that's mostly who's in trucking. But, um, so I bought this two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. I really like this brand, I think it smells really good. But for women, I think you should just get a small thing of shampoo and conditioner because these two-in-ones aren't really good for girls' hair. Next, I picked up this body soap, and honestly, you're probably gonna need a good amount of this. So I got like a little bit of a bigger one. I don't think a small one will last you for two months. On the truck, you're gonna need a lot of it to wash off the grease and stuff. And I really like this brand anyways, and I like the way it smells, so please buy it so you guys all smell like this. Guys, if you need it, girls, definitely. A little moment of silence for our friend over here that decided to die. Alrighty, so next on the list is a hairbrush and I picked up this little one because I'm trying to use the least amount of space possible. And for girls, you need elastics too if you have longer hair, um, but it gets the job done. Alrighty guys, next on the list is a washcloth or a loofah and I just picked up this green one. I like the loofahs better because at the end you can just squeeze out all the water and kind of like shake it out and sometimes I put it under those little hand dryers to dry it before I put it back in my bag and with a washcloth it's it's really wet and uh, it's it's not easy to like put back in your bag because it's it's just gonna be soaking wet and it probably will smell the next day. Another thing to keep in mind is that at the truck stop showers, they do provide you a washcloth and a towel, but it's up to you whether or not you want to use them. Also, I got some baby wipes, and I really like this brand. I used to think that you can only order them on Amazon, but they're actually at Target now. Um, I really hate the smell of baby wipes, <laughs> but I do like this brand, and I do appreciate that these wipes are actually a little bit stronger, so I think that they're better for a truck driver because you can wipe off like the grease and stuff super easily and the, the wipes just don't like fall apart. Um, they are not flushable obviously, that's why they're so thick, but I think they're really, really good quality wipes. If you want my opinion, I would buy this brand of wipes. 
Next on the list is deodorant and I bought this cute little thing. And uh, I think this is so cool. So it's, it's actually like a twist top. You have to unscrew the top of it. And this is a brand new one, but um, I actually use this deodorant right now, not not this particular one, this one's new, but I I really like it. Even though it's like, I think it's the men's brand, but I just, I like the smell of it and I think it's it's really cute and you don't have the, the fear of it, you know, pulling off. But anyways, just something to think about. All right, so next I have shaving cream and a razor and I've gone ahead and picked these two up and these are of course also in the men's section. I thought this razor was super cool because it's not plastic and things that are plastic when they're in the water a lot, they're they're very porous so they so they take in and hold things and so they get really old and gross and smelly after a while and I thought it was really cool that it has this, I think it's like a stainless steel. It's a little bit more expensive in the beginning because I think this thing is like $20 but it comes with like little replacement blades and it is a single blade razor I'm not sure how safe that is but um, I don't know in the long run I think it costs you less money plus it is more sanitary next on the list is a toothbrush and I just picked up this little Oral-B charcoal toothbrush I think charcoal makes your teeth feel cleaner but that's probably just in my head I picked up toothpaste right so I really like this brand. Um, so this one's a charcoal one, that's why it's black. And this one is just a regular white toothpaste. Anyways, try them out, let me know what you think. Sticking with the same brand, I picked up one of their little floss kits and I picked up some of their mouthwash. I tried their charcoal mouthwash and I'm not really a fan, but my friend is a fan, so I mean, Try it if you want to, but I think this one's pretty good. Last on the list is a towel because I don't like using the towels in the truck stops, but I picked up this one from Target and it's a, it's a little bit thicker of a towel and it has dog hair all over it because of Dakota. So that's it for self care and we're gonna go ahead and move on to clothing. All right, first things first, since we're already talking about truck stop showers, you are going to need a pair of flip flops and I did pick these up at Target, but I'm really disappointed with the price of these flip-flops. They're $8, and um, it's really steep for some plastic flip-flops, but I'm sure you can get a cheap pair at Walmart. Next on the list is closed-toed shoes. So not every carrier requires you to wear steel-toed boots, but make sure you check with them beforehand. When I went into training, I just wore tennis shoes, and generally I wore the same shoes every day. So the, so the shoes I wore for trucking school, I wore on my trainer's truck, and it worked out fine. Just don't wear flip-flops or those slides. Also, you're gonna need some t-shirts. I think you should bring about seven t-shirts. Generally, I try to wear darker clothes working on the truck just because I know I'm going to be getting dirty and things are gonna be getting greasy and there's, there, like, it just looks a little bit better so you're not walking around with like a white shirt that's literally got... Hi. Goodbye. So, don't wear anything that's light colored because then it's just going to look really, really dirty and it's really hard to wash out. Um, so darker clothes are the best way to go. I think seven's a good number because then you have a different shirt for every day of the week. You don't want to bring too much and you don't want to bring too little because you, one, you don't know how often you'll be able to do laundry, but two, you don't have a lot of room on your trainer's truck or in your bag to be able to put on the bus to drive or to, to ride to your trainer. So be mindful of that. All right, so now let's talk about pants. Generally, I think you should bring jeans. You should already be bringing jeans to trucking school if you are there currently. But if you're not, remember to bring some jeans. For example, I have a pair of black jeans here that I generally wear. Um, if you notice in most of my posts on social media, you'll see that I wear a pair of black leggings. Yes, I don't always follow the rules, but I am basically contracted to drive. I also pick black because same reason as the shirts, if they get dirty it doesn't look so bad. Also, I think a good number of jeans to bring with you is about three and 
I know this isn't necessarily everybody's cup of tea, but you can wear jeans multiple times and so one, it cuts down on the amount of laundry you have to do because that's time and money when you're not rolling. Now let's talk about underwear. I think you should bring at least 14 pairs of underwear. Now bear with me. I say 14 because you don't know when you're going to do laundry and having two weeks worth of underwear I think is important. Also you just want spares just in case you get like completely soaking wet and you want some dry clothes. It's important because you can't really re-wear underwear. Okay so let's move on to socks now and I think the same thing as underwear you should have at least 14 pairs for the same reason you walk in a puddle you get your feet completely soaked you're gonna want to change your socks. Next on the list is a belt and this is only if you need it so you know who you are if you need a belt. <laughs> it's not attractive when guys have their pants falling down while they're bending over trying to do things so please wear a belt if you need one. Okay so last on my list is a winter jacket and a beanie. This is only for the people who happen to be training during the winter time. It's important to understand that if you are training over the road you're going to be going to places that are colder for longer. So even though it might be warm down in Georgia right now or Alabama, you're going to want to prepare to go to Montana. For my winter work jacket, I have a Columbia brand jacket. It's waterproof, but it's also really warm. I think the most important thing to remember for these jackets is one, they, they should be dark so that way when they get dirty they don't look really bad. When you're in the rain, you want to be able to wear something that will keep you from getting wet. Also, in the winter time when you're rolling under the trailer trying to put on tire chains, these things come in handy. Okay, I also wanted to mention because all these clothes that I am recommending to you are dark colored clothes, you need to make sure that you wear your safety vest. Generally, the company that you're going to will provide you with one, but always remember to wear it, especially on the side of the road when it's, when it's raining and when it's snowing. You need to be visible so that way people know that you're out there. So many people have been hit by cars going by, by trucks going by, and please don't be one of those people. Something I almost forgot is work gloves. You don't want to forget these. Um, I don't think you're going to be able to find uh, snow gloves at Walmart or Target, but I don't know, maybe you will. I got these from just like a uh, an outdoorsy store. You can generally find them. I usually wear snow gloves all year round only because one, they're waterproof. But two, they protect my fingers, especially since I'm doing doubles and working with dollies. I want to protect my fingers as much as possible. Alright, so now we're going to move on to bedding. Generally, when you're getting on a truck with a trainer, you're going to have the top bunk. And the top bunk is a little bit smaller than the bottom bunk, but the sheet sizes are still the same. So for most of the mattresses that come in trucks, they are a twin XL size. And you can get sheets for this literally anywhere. And these sheets were only, I think, $5 in the Twin XL size, and they're really comfortable. They're microfiber sheets, and I think they are awesome for the price. While I'm in the same aisle, I generally pick up some extra pillowcases. One, they're really small and really easy to fit in your stuff, so they're not that extra. But it's important to think about when you won't be doing laundry for a long time, it's, you can change your pillowcase still and it's a little bit cleaner, it's better for your face. Okay, also you're gonna need a pillow. Fortunately for me, I brought a pillow with me to trucking school, so I had one to take on the truck. Um, but if you don't, you can buy pillows for super cheap in Walmart and Target. Once you get your own truck, I really suggest you get a really nice pillow because you're going to be spending a lot of time on the truck. Not only a lot of time, but if you're a team driver, you're going to want a really good pillow that kind of absorbs the movement of the truck so you can sleep better. This is my favorite pillow I have ever bought. And I love them so much that I think I have six of them. <laughs> and I have six of the king size pillows. Anyways, this one's just a standard size. If you can afford it, I, I think you should really invest in a nice pillow. And this one is super awesome. 
All right, so last on the list is a blanket. And this is only for people who need like a little extra on top of them to be able to sleep. You want to prepare yourself in case your trainer likes to sleep in Antarctica because some people like their truck really cold when they sleep and it's gonna be really hard to sleep if you're freezing. Anyways, uh, just picked up a dark colored one because I picked up white sheets and that probably wasn't the greatest idea, so pick dark sheets. Last category on the list is miscellaneous. So, some things to keep in mind. First of all, which if you're already in trucking school or you're at home, you're not gonna forget your phone charger, at least I hope you don't. If you don't have one, you need to go pick one up because how else are you watching me? Do you have a computer? Anyways, I just picked one up from Target just for props. Alrighty, next, um, you are going to have lots of downtime on the truck. So whether it's your 34 hour reset, where your trainer leaves you in Kentucky for 34 hours and you don't know what to do. I know a lot of people aren't readers, but I'm a reader. So bring whatever it is that you entertain yourself with. I think people bring like, what are those? Those handheld game systems, I'm not a gamer, but I assume that would entertain you. Um, just be prepared for lots of downtime, either 34 hour reset, 10 hour break, or sitting at the loading docks because that can take a lot of time, four plus hours, so be prepared. Okay, so this is really important to think about. You are going to need laundry detergent. And so even in the truck stops, they sell some pretty large containers of laundry detergent. You have a really small space and you are on somebody else's truck. You need to get stuff that you're only going to need for that period of time. So what's really cool is I found these little sample bottles at Target. This Method brand has one that has 10 loads in it. And I, I love this brand also. So. I would pick up this one. I also like the top on this one. It's like a little squirty top where you can open it. If I could open it. Making this really hard. Okay. Where you can open it and it's got, I think it's got a cover on it so it won't come out. You can just squirt it into the washer and um, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Okay, so going along with laundry, it's important to think about how you're gonna pay for the laundry. A lot of truck stops will exchange cash for coins, but if you don't have cash on you, you'll have to get cash back and then exchange them for coins. So just prepare and go ahead and get like a roll of quarters from the bank, that's what I did. And so loads of laundry are gonna be anywhere from like 125 to 175, depending on where you go, so you're gonna need a lot of these. Alrighty, so that's everything in my list. And I've gone ahead and I've made this list available for you on my website. So you just need to go to the link down in the description. Everything is listed out for you and I provided some pictures and a little bit more information about getting on your trainer's truck. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Um, let me know what you think or if I missed anything, go ahead and put it in the comments below. There's also a place to comment on the article on my website. So. Leave a comment there if it helped you or if you can think of anything at all that I missed because I am not perfect, but I truly believe that this list is fully comprehensive of everything that you're gonna need on the truck with your trainer. Make sure that all of these things can fit into some kind of bag or suitcase. Be mindful of the space you're gonna have on your trainer's truck because it's either going to go under the bed or up on your top bunk with you. So generally I think you should get something that's a little bit softer, not a suitcase because you're probably gonna be putting your feet under it while you're sleeping. So if this video has helped you in any way, go ahead and consider liking the video. And if you are a veteran trucker or someone who's already in the industry, been through this process recently, and you feel like I've missed anything, please comment it down below. I know this whole process is nerve wracking and I feel for you, but I wish you the best. You're gonna make it through this and I look forward to seeing you guys again. Bye. <laughs> Okay, ooh, how many times am I gonna have to do this? 50 billion, come on, up, 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 <laughs> get up, up. That is really cringy. with the trainer, the I know a lot of people aren't. 
It was a dusty thing flying in front of the camera. Bleh. I wanted to mention, ugh, I don't want to want to mention. Consider it bleh, 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 bleh. Some of my, ugh. This is killing me.